Can you talk us through some of the main issues being raised at the Ordesh here today? Yeah, first of all, obviously, we're at the precipice of a budget at the moment. Uh, the government are, you know, uh, making an argument just before the budget that you can have European public services on American taxes. Um, unfortunately, they say that before every budget and they say that before every election. It's impossible. And there's a major problem with public service delivery in this country for two reasons. The first is that there is a dysfunction in how the public services are run uh, in Ireland. Uh, there's a dysfunction in the, in the health service. Um, the HSC is, by its own structure, dysfunctional. And as a result, we have about a million people who are on hospital waiting lists. And we have staff, nurses, doctors and healthcare workers who are leaving the public service uh, at the moment. And that needs to change. There needs to be, first of all, proper reform of the health service. And secondly, proper investments to make sure that people can get the necessary uh, treatments uh, that they need. There's, it's an incredible thing that's coming up at the Ordesh today is the facts that the government are confused. The government are distracted um, by the culture wars. They're distracted by the media, NGO, political bubble. They're forgetting about the real people that are actually living on the streets of every town and village in this country. And, you know, we've reached a tipping point in terms of crime and antisocial uh, behaviour. You know, towns are riddled with drug dealing, drug taking with, you know, unprovoked violence at this moment in time. Even during the daytime, people are fearful in towns. I know of cases where staff and shops are being threatened with rape and assault uh, if they go to the Gardaí in terms of reporting crimes that are happening. Slow motion crime sprees are happening where criminals are literally walking two or three miles from one end of the town to the other, breaking in and assaulting people while there's no, not enough Gardaí to be able to deal with it. And yet, during all of that, when rapes have doubled over the last 10 years, where sexual assault has doubled over the last uh, 10 years, when there's a major spike in the murder rate just in the last year, what is Helen McEntee been focusing on? The hate speech bill. And, you know, there's just that disconnect between real people's concerns and what the government is doing. Similar is happening in, in the healthcare uh, system. Like We have put in a lot of uh, requests for government for information. We found out that there's been 500 adverse incidents have happened in the hospital service over the last five years. 3,158 people have died because of mistakes in the hospital service uh, just in the last five years. And yet, what's uh, Stephen Donnelly focused on? He's focusing on the, the abortion review, deleting the, the three-day protection that exists for children. There are thousands of children alive today in this country as a result of that. And yet his review didn't see fit to ask one question of one mother uh, who benefited uh, from that. You know, um, so again, uh, the government bringing in a law looking to inhibit freedom of protest. Um, and, you know, even commissioning a review where the, the chair of that review states that people who have a pro-life view should not be employed in the health service. So we have on one level a, a, a crisis in terms of we don't have enough doctors, nurses or people working in the health service. And another level, an arm of the state saying, no, we're not going to employ people if they stand up for the right to life. So that, that disconnect that exists there uh, between the government and real people. And it's similar in the agricultural uh, sphere. You know, we have farmers on the floor in terms of income, on the floor and like literally earning uh, less than the cost of production at the moment. And at the same time, uh, we have a government supporting the Mercursor deal, uh, a deal that's going to bring in uh, Brazilian beef into Ireland to replace uh, Irish beef on the European markets, banning the, 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 the production of peat while taking in peat uh, from Latvia. Um, you know, uh, uh, this easy, happy to stand over the dysfunction uh, in the market that sees a small amount of supermarkets, a small amount of factories squeezing the income of farmers ever, ever more. So one of the main messages out of this Ordash today is that the government needs to start realise who are they working for? Are they working for the elites? Are they working for the NGOs? Are they working for the media? Or are they working for the citizens of this country? The aim to have been really to the fore in terms of highlighting the uh, major issues that exist in, in terms of the health service in the country. So last year, for example, we organized um, a hospital campaign that happened across, uh, right across the country, uh, exposing some of the really, really horrendous and harrowing stories from uh, our citizens who have been really affected by the health service. So for example, uh, in 2022, we know that over 2000 people uh, left the emergency department at Mayo University Hospital without being seen to. Uh, and that's been increasing over successive years. And we also know uh, that we have a capacity crisis in terms of beds uh, at Mayo University Hospital and indeed right across the country. So in Mayo, for example, we know that 
the HSC failed to increase the bed capacity by one bed over the eight years prior to COVID-19. And that, of course, coincided with population increase. Uh, but also the fact that the um, Roscommon Hospital had closed at that time and the HSE had uh, assured the people of the West that the centres of excellence would be resourced adequately to make up for uh, the situation with regard to closing down um, regional hospitals. So A2 have been to the fore in terms of highlighting this. Um, and we've also sought to help people on a really local level, getting people off waiting lists. So for example, the Mayo Cataract Bus uh, leaves Mayo every six to eight weeks, uh, getting patients off waiting lists, bringing them to the north uh, for a cataract procedure and returning then uh, on the second day. And we do this across a range of different uh, procedures from hips to knees um, and, and cataracts as well. So look, we're calling on the government to adequately resource the HSC and reform the HSC as well. Uh, many of the main issues I face are on a very localised, on the ground basis. Um, what we're finding is because of the lack of government now, the pressure is on the people themselves. And I suppose we are part of that people powered movement. It's over to the people now to generally take the power back into their hands. So we're seeing more and more um, charity organisations being dependent on coming forward and more and more community organisations building and beginning to advocate for the people themselves. And the exclusion law um, in the North banning protest outside or even prayer outside abortion facilities has come into force. Can you talk about that? Yeah, we find that extremely concerning. Um, you know, you, we are supposed to have human rights. We have a, you're supposed to have the freedom of speech, the freedom, freedom of expression, freedom of religion. We have that coming from the United Convention, but only if it fits the narrative, basically, is the way we're feeling. So um, depending on what you're doing and where you're standing is dependent on whether you can engage those rights or not, which is completely wrong. What has been the reaction on the ground to the new law? Are people signalling that they will not abide by it? Yeah, there have been. We've had, um, so I myself, um, my ho local hospital is Causeway Hospital. There have been arrests this week um, because people continued. Um, and rightly so, we continue to ex exercise our, our freedom of speech, our freedom of expression. Uh, and those people obviously feel that, they, that it is their right and they believe they are assisting um, those in need. We need more compassion in this. We need um, voices of reason. Uh, we need to come away from the restriction on our human rights. And we need to support the right to life and all, all forms right from uh, to womb to tomb. Um, we have those exclusion rights now, or exclusion zones, so I are causing major concern because like everything, you be, you, if that is the beginning, where does this end?